Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to take a look at the song House of the Lord by Phil Wickham. This is a pretty new song. It's also a pretty simple song. And in this video, I'll show you how to play it on acoustic guitar. Very simple, very easy to learn. We're also going to talk about some themes, some things that you can share with your worship team or your church as you prepare to lead it, and then also scripture that would go hand in hand really well with this song. So let's dive into the first part. All right, so part one of this video, learning how to play it on acoustic guitar. Uh, before we dive into the intro, I just want to make a couple of notes here. First of all, this song is in the key of B flat, and as an acoustic guitar player, what we're going to do, we're just going to capo on the third fret and play G shape. Okay, so pretty simple, very easy. And then additionally, we also use the Nash. I also use the Nashville number system. So what you'll see up here, I always have the chords up here. You'll see the Nashville number system on top which is just like one through seven. Underneath that, you're gonna see the chords that are associated. So you'll see, since we're in the key of G, or playing in the key of G, you'll see G, D, E minor, and so on and so forth, okay? You might also see some parentheses up here. Don't freak out over that. If you see that, all that means is that any given two chords split the bar. And so what that means is if there's four beats in a bar, it's let's just say that we have the one chord and the five chord, uh, assume that that one chord and that five chord split the bar evenly, so two beats a piece, correct? And if there's anything beyond that, I'll specify uh, otherwise and, uh, and let you know. Uh, and there is a case here in this song where it does do that. Clear as mud, let me know down in the comments below uh, if that doesn't make any sense or if it does make sense. Just comment below, say hey. Now that we got all that out of the way, let's dive into the intro for this song. And it's going to be three chords, one, four, and five, so G, C and D, okay? Just those three chords, very simple. And uh, let's just go ahead and throw this up here on the screen. This is gonna be the progression. It's going to be one bar of the one chord, so G. And then we're gonna have a split bar here, and it's gonna be one to our five chord, okay? And then after that, we'll have a full bar of the four, which is C. And then after that, a bar of four back to the five. Okay, and then the and then the whole bar just it, or the whole section just repeats. Okay, now let me just say this: the 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 two chords that are in parentheses in this case, um, it's not split evenly. What we're gonna do for the intro and really for this song, instead of just counting one, two, three, four, I want you to count one and two and three and four and because the five chord, especially in this second bar, it gets pushed. It's a pushed chord and it's pushed from the four to the and of three. So one and two and three and, that's when the, the chord hits. And the same thing for that last five in the, in the last bar. A push chord basically just means it's pushed up an eighth note, and that's why we're, we're counting one and two and three and four in. So just, just so that we're on the same page. So let me just play through the intro progression here. So it's gonna be this, a one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, so that's a little bit slow. Let me just speed it up real quick. So a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four and one and two and One and two and three and four and, and then it just repeats, okay? Okay, so verse one, a little bit more simple. You can count one, two, three, four for this case. There's no push chords. Uh, it's gonna be, we're gonna have two bars of the one. We're gonna have a bar where you're gonna see three chords in parentheses. The one, six minor, which is E minor for us, and the five. So that one is gonna get two beats, and then the six minor and five will get one beat a piece. So it'd be one, two, three, four. Okay, so this would be how that would sound. One, two, three, four. Okay, and then after that, a full bar of the four. Very simple, so let me just play through that. It is a four bar uh, progression here, and so this is how it goes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. And then that just repeats. Very simple. They go into kind of the next section of that of that verse, and that's going to be verse verse one. Moving into chorus number one, this song just gets easier. We're going to have one bar of the one, and then we'll have a split bar. It's going to be 
one bar of the one and five, but the five is gonna come in on the four. So it would just be one, two, three, four. Okay, so that's that bar. And then we're gonna have a bar of four, and then a bar of four to the five. Okay, so again, another four bar progression here that just repeats. It's gonna be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Man, it's just it's just so easy. And then after that, they repeat it, uh, doing the, the second half of the chorus, which after that, they're gonna go back into the, uh, the intro. Well, it's a turnaround, but same chords as the intro, okay? Um, and just remember that intro uh, it, on that second bar and the fourth bar, if you look at it, a four bar progression, second and fourth bar, uh, that five chord is gonna be pushed to the end of, of, of three. If you were doing this live just as a band, if you wanted to nix that section and just put it to the four, just say, hey, we're not gonna do a, a push chord. If you didn't wanna go that far and you wanted to keep it simple for the entirety of the song, uh, you could do that. Just say, hey, we're going to we're gonna put that five on the four instead of the and of three. Jumping into verse number two, it's the same thing as verse number one with the exception on the back half of it uh, where it's kind of that down section because he hung upon that cross then he rose up from that grave. My God's still rolling stones away. That section, uh, we're just going to look at that. It's going to be one bar of the one to one bar of the two minor, which is a minor since we're in the key of G. And then from there, they're going to go to a split bar evenly. Six minor, which is E minor. Five, full bar of the four. And you'll see that up here. Pretty simple. And then after that, they're going to go right back into another chorus. And then from there, we're going to go to turnaround number two. Turnaround number two is just two bars of one. So just one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And from there, going into the bridge, so it's gonna be four bars of the one, and there's also kind of this five over one chord that I think the keys would play. Uh, just stick with that one chord. You could, if you wanted to, take your pointer finger and on the G string, second fret, just go. You could do that. Right, that's that's one little thing you could do. Just give it, kind of give it a little bit more of a flair, and get that five in there. But it's going to be four bars of the one. After that, they're going to go to one bar of six minor, and then there's going to be a split bar between the four and the one. However, this is going to be one of those cases where the the chord is pushed up, and so it's going to be one and two and three and four and. So one and two and three. So it's gonna be on the end of the two. So six minor, four, one, okay? And then after that, they're gonna to go to the five, four, one. So all together, this is going to be the bridge. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, That's going to be the bridge, and then they're just going to repeat it. And you'll notice I switched from a quarter note count to an eighth note count just to kind of help with kind of that, you know, and it, it, you can in your head do that, but even just a one, two, three, four, even without counting, you can kind of get a feel that, that that one is pushed a little bit faster than it should be. But anyways, that's the bridge. After that, they're going to go back into the chorus two times. Nothing is different. And then out to the outro. Outro is the same as the intro. They do it twice. And then there's just kind of this down uh, ending section that you can play if you want. All it is is one bar of the one, one bar of two minor. Basically the, the back half of, of verse two, six minor, five, and four. Just kind of this really melodic, atmospheric ending um, and you, but you can hear those chords in there. 
So that's everything. That's how you play House of the Lord on acoustic guitar. Hopefully that was really simple. If you have any questions, especially about those push chords or the Nashville number system, please let me know in, in the comments below or reach out to me on the Instagram. I would love to help you guys out. But don't go anywhere. Let's dive into the next section of this video. Okay, so this song is a pretty cool song. And it's actually really easy as well, as I've said before. Super simple to play on acoustic guitar. Super simple to play, I would say, for your band. Uh, very catchy, uh, melodically, and just a really good celebration an invitation to worship. And it focuses on who God is and what God has done. And I love the emphasis on there's joy in the house of the Lord. So maybe this is like a song that you open your services with and you welcome everyone saying, hey, everybody at, at you know, Covenant Baptist Church or, you know, uh, Grace Baptist Church or, or New Fellowship Church or this Presbyterian church, whatever you are, whatever church you go to, you know, you can give your welcome and you say, hey, who's happy to be in the house of God this morning? Who's happy to be amongst other believers today? Right, I think you get a, a pretty good response. There's most people I would say are pretty excited to be in the house of the Lord and to be able to worship with other believers. So, being able to kind of tie in that idea with the song, that'd be a great segue and say, "Hey, we're going to sing a brand new song this morning called House of the Lord." It talks about who God is and what He's done for us. Let's join in together and sing this song. And then moving into the bridge, I love the bridge. So. It talks about, basically it's Colossians 1, and we're going to get there. But it says, we were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We're forgiven, accepted, redeemed by his grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. So, the song in and of itself, as I said before, is an invitation to worship. And there's a multitude of reasons why we worship, why we sing hymns and praises and spiritual songs, right? And a couple of those reasons, number one, is just to acknowledge who God is. And that's what this song does. He's the, he is, he's the God who was, who is, and forevermore will be. There's joy in the house of the Lord because of that. Additionally, we also sing in worship because of what God has done for us, how he's taken us from that path of, of destruction headed to hell. We were, on a, we were on a path headed to hell, and Jesus stepped in and said, no, I'm going to take on the penalty of sin for you, and you're going to be able to made one, be made one with God the way it was meant to be. And those are great reasons to sing. So those are just a few thoughts on the song in and of itself. I think a couple of ideas maybe. Hopefully that's helpful for you in, as you go to prepare to lead this song, whenever it is that you do it. But let's dive into the scripture. So I mentioned Colossians chapter 1. I love this passage. So we're going to look here in verse 15. You really could read this entire section, 15 through uh, 23, and kind of kind of 21 through 20, 23 is, is where it kind of like flips the switch. Uh, so starting in verse 15, it says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of the cross. It's like, here's here's who Jesus is, right? Like, this is this is Jesus, and like, this is this is his goal. This is what God intended, is making peace by the blood of the cross. And then here's kind of where we come in, right? Uh, verse 21. And you who were once alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by death. Amen. Can I get an amen? Is there joy in the house of the Lord today because of this? I can guarantee you, like, people will respond to that because this is truth. This is solid truth right here. And that song has that truth in there. And it's just, it's just good. It's just good. Um, in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. Thank you, Jesus. And if indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven and of which I, Paul, became a minister. So this passage, Colossians 1, it's just a great passage in and of itself. And it just kind of sums up the gospel right there. That's a summation of the gospel, but that would be great to share with your worship team and your church as you go to lead this song. It's a prompting to worship. This song is a prompting to worship, and so is that passage. Guys, there is a reason why we worship, and that is it right there.
It's because of Jesus, just because of who he is, not just for what he's done for us, you know, but because that's who he is and he's worthy of that, but additionally because of what he did for us. It's amazing. And I hope that you're encouraged by this song or by this video. I hope that you feel equipped and you're ready to lead this song. Please let me know in the comments below if you have any questions and any recommendations for any songs in the future that you would love to learn. Love to be able to help you guys. Uh, but that's it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more tutorials and just more videos about worship ministry, worship leadership as we continue to, to make those videos in the future. And don't forget to hit the post notifications bell too so that you can get a little notification on your phone. When I, I do a video. It's like, Justin Owens has a new video. Do that. It'd be great. Whew, okay. And like the video. Man, all the things you got to say in all of the YouTube videos. So anyways, thanks so much for watching. We'll see y'all in the next video.